I know the kingdom of heaven has been postponed. However, is there a kingdom under the dispensation of grace? People are saying we are now living in a spiritual kingdom and that God is still reigning spiritually in this world, although not in a physical sense, and more importantly, in our hearts. So the question is, is there, is there a kingdom today? Is it a spiritual kingdom that reigns in man's hearts? What is it? So get with me 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll look at verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Well, is there a kingdom today? Yes, there is a kingdom today, and it's called the kingdom of God. If you look in the scriptures, you will find the phrase, the kingdom of God, is both a term used by Paul, and it's also a term that is used in the, in the Gospels, in, in Mark, Luke, and John, for example. What's going on is this. The kingdom of God includes both the promises given to believing Israel, redeemed Israel, and the body of Christ. In other words, the kingdom of God includes both. Look with me at Revelation 19, verse 16. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Now the point of that verse obviously is the Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings. In other words, he's the king over everything. And therefore, the kingdom of God is broader than just the promises given to Israel. It's broader than simply the body of Christ. The kingdom of God relates to, it includes, everything that God reigns over. And what does God reign over? Everything, right? Because he's king of kings and lord of lords. Now, I want to address just a little bit here the idea of a spiritual kingdom of God reigning in the hearts of men. And one of the things that you need to, to think through is you need to think through the different millennial positions. And what I mean by that is premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism. So there's three different views. What those views pertain to is the relationship between the second coming and the millennial kingdom. So if we look at the chart together, let me just ask you this. Is the second coming before or after the millennium? Before. And so the chart illustrates pre-millennialism, that the second coming of Christ is pre, it's before the millennium. What post-millennialism says is that the second coming of Christ is after the millennium. What amillennialism millennialism says is there is no millennium. So think of it this way. Pre means before. Post means after. What does a mean? Not. So if someone is a theist... They believe in God. If someone is an atheist, they do not believe in God. So get with me Revelation 19. And I'm going to show you sort of a simple proof of premillennialism. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse... And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. 
Now, does anyone have any idea who that might be? That's clearly the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Verse 17, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. What event is Revelation 19 talking about? It's the second coming. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, where he's with the armies of heaven. He's going to return, and he's going to execute vengeance on his adversaries. So Revelation 19 is plainly about the second coming. Now look with me at Revelation 20, verse 1. Now before we do that, let me ask you a question. Which comes first, Revelation 19 or 20? Revelation 19. So when we read Revelation 20, we're reading something after Revelation 19. At verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now we're going to read several verses here, and I want you to tell me if you ever noticed the term thousand years. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ... A thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, did anyone get the idea that? The first several verses are about the thousand years. So if you just read Revelation 19 and Revelation 20, where would you guess the second coming is in relation to the thousand years? Before it. So let's talk about postmillennialism just for a minute. The idea of postmillennialism is that the Lord Jesus Christ returns after after there has been a thousand-year reign of righteousness on the earth. In other words, the church, without the Lord Jesus Christ returning, reigns over the earth in righteousness for a thousand years. Does anyone believe that's possible? Do you think, I mean, look, read the newspaper. Do you think the church is going to take command of society and there will be a, a man's righteous kingdom that will last for a thousand years without the Lord personally establishing it? Do you realize that's just, there, there, there is zero, zero chance of that happening. There, there, there is zero chance of that happening. So post-millennialism is just, I mean, you're just not living in a real world if you think that. The, the church is not going to do that. Amillennialism is the idea that there is no literal millennium, Ah, millennialism. And instead, what God does is he rules in the hearts of men. Is that what happens? Does there come a point where the earth, where Christ rules in the hearts of men? No. It, it, let, me, let me just make this clear. In Revelation 19, what happens, and we read the verse... When, when it talks about the fowls of heaven and it gathers them together under the supper of the great God, you know what that's about? It's about the Lord Jesus Christ returning from heaven to earth. And the way he establishes kingdom is not that men in righteous, with righteousness in their hearts get together and they agree, you should rule because you're worthy. 
That's not what happens at all. What happens is the masses of humanity oppose Jesus Christ return. They gather together to kill him. And what is his response? The armies of heaven destroy them. That's why the fowls are gathered together. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ millennial kingdom is established not in the hearts of men. It's not established by the church taking over society and then everyone behaves righteously. It's established by the Lord Jesus Christ killing his adversaries. That's what happens in Revelation 19. That's what happens in Armageddon. It's those that oppose the reign of Jesus Christ that are wiped out. I wish that wasn't the case, but that's what the case is. So when people talk about Christ reigning in the hearts of men, it's a reference to amillennialism, and it's not what the scriptures teach. The Lord Jesus Christ establishes his kingdom by military conquest. That's what he does. That's how it's set up. So study that out for yourself. Be fully persuaded in your own mind.